Milt Hinton, it's good to see you again. And in this month of September, uh, Minnesotans remember one of their sons that went overseas. His name is Oscar Pettiford, and together you, with Ray Brown, have shared the legacy of the base via Jimmy Blanton all the way down the lot. Yeah. We, we just wanted, Ray Brown and I wanted to really say hello to the people here in Minnesota and to pay tribute to the great jazz bass player Oscar Pettiford. I spoke about him and Ray Brown spoke about him. He was one of the most creative jazz bass players it, we ever ever existed. And uh, we, we're just thrilled to be here and we figured it was fitting and proper that she, we should pay tribute and a master like Ray Brown, the, the guru as we call him, of, of bass players. He's a guru, and it was so he was so agreeable with that kind of thing. And so we played one of Oscar Pettiford's songs, and the audience really appreciated it. But it's so nice being here. There's a wonderful jazz festival here. You, I, without a doubt, it's really one of the finest ones we we ever play. And I'm very fortunate to play very many of them here in the, in the states. And uh, this one is always a joy to come to Minnesota. The crowds, the audiences here are the most receptive, they're most attentive, and they get the most out of a musician. Well, you want to listen because if we're playing and you listen, we figure we got to do our very best. Milt Hinton, uh, certainly we're, we're blessed to have you all here. And, uh, you know, when I think about it, I. Uh, you made an observation about Oscar Pettiford's uh, contribution to the art of the bass. You've made your contribution, Ray Brown his, and back in time, Jimmy Blanton, moving it forward. What, um, what did you see and observe in Oscar's playing that intrigued you? The freedom of his playing, the freedom of him playing. Not academic, I, I don't know whether Oscar ever even studied at all. But he, he had it in his heart to play, and whatever he wanted to say, he could say it. And that's the prime requisite of any musician, to be able to take an instrument and say what you want to say with it. My teacher told me years ago, that's the hardest thing for you to do, and thing is gonna, your instrument is going to challenge you for the rest of your life, because you can think of beautiful things to say, but if you can get that instrument to say them, you, you're really doing something. So we strive for that, to try to be able to play what we can think. And you know you can think of beautiful songs. You can, if you can only play what you can think of. And this is a challenge. And Oscar Pettiford was able to do that. He was a happy, free-thinking person, free-wheeling. He had no no inhibitions about what he wanted to do, and then with his two hands he could do it. And that is that that's true artistry. In this month of September, in the year 1991, remembering with the astute observations of a scholar, a musician, a photographer, and an author, the Judge Milt Hinton. Thank you so much for those observations concerning Oscar Pettiford. Thank you very much. It's lovely being with you. I appreciate this. In the 90s, September 1991, Minneapolis, the city of lakes, and it's, uh, it's the month when we remember for Minnesotans the bassist Oscar Pettiford. And seated to my left and to my right are the two giants of the bass. On my left is Milt Hinton, on my right is Ray Brown. And gentlemen, I guess what I really want to ask you is, as we remember Oscar Pettiford, going back to your early days when you were all coming up together on the scene, what did you see and hear in Oscar's approach to the instrument that uh, caught your ear and your eye? Ray? Well, first of all, I met Oscar's sister before I met Oscar. And I was playing with her in Pittsburgh. I was a little young bass player. And she said, you know, I got a little brother that plays the bass. Say, he plays good, but he won't learn how to read, you know? I had no idea, you know, her name was Leah, Leah Pettiford. I didn't meet Oscar until I was with Dizzy. Now, I knew him, of course, by reputation, and he was a monster, you know. And one night I was playing in, with uh, Dizzy at the Spotlight in New York, and I happened to look up, and there's a the guy standing over in the, with a raincoat on against the wall, watching the bed, it was Oscar Pettiford. 
And I froze. I just went into a freeze. Why is this? What year? No, I'm saying, why did you freeze? Well, if you had any idea, the esteem that you have for guys that are your idols, it's a natural thing that'll happen to you, you know? And it happens to all of us. I froze when I first met Hinton, you know? I used to go down and see him backstage at the Strand Theater. And he had his Samantha book out practicing in between. You remember that, Judge? Yeah. And I used to go ask him to help me with the bow and, you know. So he was, you know, he helped all of us young guys. I mean, Pettiford and I were a little younger than the judge, you know. So the judge was one of our idols, you know. I uh, idolized both of these guys. But Pettiford was a, just a supreme soloist. I mean, I loved the way he played solos, you know. One of my favorites, you know. Thank you very much, Ray. Well, Milty, a postscript uh, from you uh, on the same thought. Uh, I just mentioned a minute ago that uh, I met Oscar in 1937, and this is pretty And I saw I saw the natural talent that he has. As I said, he, he hadn't studied with anyone. He just picked up the bass, and he just played whatever he wanted to play. And it was amazing to do that. Because I had this, as Ray just mentioned, I'm around there with the books and the bowls, studying Samantha, and anything he wanted to play, he just played it. He just played it, and that's amazing, and that's true talent. That's what you call innate talent, to be able to do that. And the happiness for which he did it, you know. He, he didn't think about where, where, what position he was in or, or what it was. He just played those notes to play what he wanted to play. And we're still playing some of those things now which is very nice for him. And Ray, Ray, I told you just a minute ago, Ray, we call every Karoo bass players, Karoo. I saw him, I saw him do what he's done, become the greatest bass player that ever lived. I saw him practice. I saw him work at this. They, and I just saw this thing happen day by day. I can remember, I'll tell you one particular story, Ray. I can tell you, we were down in Florida, Miami, Florida. Years ago, I won't mention the year, but you and I were walking down the street. We used to meet on 2nd Avenue and go and by some joint and just practice every afternoon. And we walked by one place one day, and, and as we stopped by that, it was during the daytime. There was no, no music supposed to be going on, but we had a band in the back practicing. And Ray stopped me and put one and said, wait, let's hear these guys. We couldn't even see them. They were back in the dark, and we were listening. And, Ray, and we had this bass player, Ray said, he, had, he must have had a cigar box, it was so bad, you couldn't hear much sound out of it, but his time was impeccable. And Ray said to me, uh, we're going to hear more about this guy. And I said, yeah, I said, and that trumpet player sounds pretty good too. Uh -huh. He said, yeah, man, it sure does. Said, and the guitar player is great. It turned out to be the bass player was Sam Jones. Which took, which replaced Ray Brown when Ray Brown went to someplace else with, with Oscar Peterson. The, the the trumpet player was Blue Mitchell. That's right. Do you remember that? And the the, the 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 guitar player's name was Eric Mitchell, and he was an excellent guitar player. But uh, unfortunately, he got in a lot of trouble, and so we never got he never got to finish his career. And the saxophone player was named Bird Iron. I mean, he was too good looking. I think the ladies confiscated him. <laughs> but that, but we've, we've looked through this kind of thing because he's always been in search of new talent. And everywhere we were, he'd look around and see who's around. And it's so wonderful to be here with him now. Well, you know, it, tonight was kind of special because uh, years ago when, when, when we were all busy, Milt and I never got to play together, you know? And it's been great because we played together at UCLA, you know? And now now we take the time and t to do some things together, and it's great, you know? Yeah, it's good. Yeah, he and I and John Clayton did a show I wish I had on film. I just, I kicked myself every time I didn't bring the cameras in there for that show, you know? It was so gorgeous, it was really lovely, you know? Well, Middle Hinton and uh, Ray Brown, thank you so much for reminiscing backstage here. So appreciate. It's a privilege in this month 
september nineteen ninety one